Good afternoon, the C everyone. Hope you're all having a very happy Sunday. <clears throat> I've taken some cough medicine, so hopefully I won't cough as much on you tonight as I did this morning. And uh, but we are gonna have some fun talking about sea turtles tonight. <clears throat> so we, uh, this week, I mentioned this morning during our, our Sunday morning service, if you're on you, uh, Facebook or YouTube, if you'll give me a quick hello in the chat, let me know it's working. Let me know you can hear me, audio's working, all that. Um, I have been known to mess things up before. But I mentioned this morning during the online service that uh, this coming week, or next Sunday, the 25th, starts our Vacation Bible School. So we will be having Vacation Bible School from Sunday to Wednesday night. And then Thursday night, we'll have commencement. And uh, so we're excited about that. And our theme this year is finding Jesus under the sea. And uh, so we're going to be looking at just examples from underwater life of uh, things that show us how God loves us. I thought it would be kind of fun tonight to do something that kind of ties in with that. And it goes along with our, our uh, VBS theme. Now, this is not one of the lessons we'll be doing during VBS, but it's kind of the same idea and uh, <clears throat> so I thought it would be kind of fun to do that. So we're going to do a little bit of uh, under the water uh, questions and fun facts and things like that tonight. <coughs> Said I wasn't going to cough as much. I'm trying my best. Hi Christy. Hi Carol. Hi Will. Thanks for letting me know you're on. Good evening. Good to see y'all. So I'm going to test your knowledge of uh, aquatic, well specifically sea turtles. Not just aquatic life tonight. All about sea turtles. They get the spotlight uh, as far as our game time goes. So we're going to jump right into it. Um, so first of all, I'm going to do like, I didn't really do a lot of uh, trivia, that type of stuff. So I do have some questions. I'm going to give you a chance to answer and see how they go. So, um, but, uh, uh, let's see, hang on a second. Um, hang on, just one moment. having some <coughs> some challenges here all right I think I got this working now I think the, the chat showing up on the screen I think I'm on the first slide uh, I think I'm actually showing up too so all right so there are seven species of sea turtles that inhabit the uh, the earth's oceans Can anyone give me uh, one of those or any of those Seven species. What are the names of those seven species? They're all sea turtles. Um, but, uh, hi, Miss Judy. Good afternoon. Good to see you again. <coughs> so, <coughs> anybody know what some of the species of sea turtles are? I apologize for just sipping my drink so much, but that's a, a requirement. Uh oh, Carol's struggling, so she's not. She doesn't know any of the species of sea turtles. Chrissy said that's a great question. She's shrugging. Okay, so this may be a little too hard of a question then. Um, I give a couple more people another chance to guess, and then I'll I'll give you the answers. Um, probably one or two. You might go, oh yeah, I've heard of that. So. Thought there might be a few that people knew about. Up, oh, Will shrugging too. All right. So unless Miss Judy has some um, has some answers here, then I'll just go ahead and give you all my answers if I can do it without messing the screen up here. <clears throat> there are seven species of sea turtles: are loggerhead. Thought you might have heard of that one. The uh, leatherback, the green turtle, which is another one I'd heard of. Hawksbill, Kemp's Ridley, Olive Ridley, and a flatback. Flatback. Almost, I didn't quite say that right. Flatback. So those are the seven species of sea turtles. 
uh, that live in, in our oceans that uh, we are familiar with. Oh, Miss Judy gave me the question mark there too. Okay, so stumped everybody with those. Uh, so yeah, seven species of sea turtles. So now when you see a, tea, see, see a sea turtle, you'll wonder, okay, which one is that? I'm going to just tell you the pictures I have next to some of these questions uh, do not correspond to um, the type of sea turtle we're asking about because I couldn't tell which ones were which, so I don't really know how to distinguish one from the other. Uh, here she said, I just know they were super cute in Finding Nemo. Yes, the sea turtles kind of stole the show uh, uh, <clears throat> in the Finding Nemo a little bit there, so... Alright, next question then. <coughs> Alright, sea turtles lay their eggs in the nest. They dig in the sand with their rear flippers. What is a group of eggs called? Do you know what uh, what you would call? You know, so they have all these different terms for groups of things, uh, like flocks and uh, for, for some animals and... Um, well, I'm drawing a blank. We did some of these in uh, some of the games not too long ago. We talked about the different words for a group of them. Anybody know what a group of eggs is called? In this particular case, we're talking about sea turtles. I don't know if it expands beyond that to other types of eggs or not, but uh, I'm going to tell you the uh, correct answer is not breakfast. So... What would a group of eggs be called? <clears throat> and I don't know about you, but that uh, that mother um, sea turtle there looks incredibly tired to me. Doesn't she? Just kind of got the eye kind of halfway open, like oh, I'm just ready to have these these children and get this over with. Any guesses on what a group of eggs would be called? The internet connection looks like pretty good, so I don't think I'm getting too much of a lag. I guess I'm a. I guess everybody just doesn't want to give me the shrug again. So, um, turtle eggs. Okay, I guess they would be called turtle eggs. Um, not to be confused with what Christy calls turtle eggs, which are the small uh, baby potatoes that you find in the cans. Um, Christy calls those turtle eggs. They have no turtle content whatsoever. All right. Um, so a group of eggs is called a clutch. So I guess it makes sense if you have some eggs, you would want to hold on to them. Uh, so maybe that's, uh, I have no idea why they're called a clutch, but uh, I guess you would want to clutch them and hang on to them. So now you know, if you see a group of uh, sea turtles, uh, mounds of their, their nest there with a bunch of eggs in it, you can say, oh, that's a clutch. Ah, Miss Judy got it, clutch. All right. So, uh, <clears throat> All right, so I mentioned this uh, this mother turtle looks tired on the beach. You say, oh, Chuck, how do you know it's a mother turtle? Um, uh, mainly because uh, most of the turtles uh, don't go on the shore very often. And uh, the, only, the only time that some of them go on shore is to have uh, to lay their eggs and to bury them in the sand. Uh, and as mentions there, they, they dig in the sand with their rear flippers, dig out a hole, lay the eggs in them, and they cover them back up. And they try to put them in the place where there's some some uh, sea oats or grass or things of that nature around on the beach there to try to, to, to hide them a little bit. Um, they also usually lay about uh, 100 to 125 eggs per nest. Um, and they will nest multiple times about two weeks apart um, over several months. So uh, uh, if you could imagine having uh, 100 children uh, one week and a few weeks later having another 100 children and a few weeks later having another hundred children, uh, I think I would lay there on the beach looking like that as well, going, okay, when is, when is this going to end? I'm ready to go back to the ocean and start swimming again. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about how they, uh, uh, how they, what they do after that, they'll get closer to the end there. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a, a kind of a <coughs> interesting thing about the way sea turtles live. Uh, also interesting note I thought you might find interesting is that the southeastern U.S. is a uh, globally significant uh, habitat for sea turtles. Uh, in fact, the Florida's beaches um, harbor about 90% of the sea turtles that nest in the continental U.S. Uh, and they are the largest rookery um, of loggerhead nesting in the world. So 
Florida in particular, uh, in the southeastern U.S. coastline, is an important place for keeping the sea turtles going. And uh, uh, particularly that loggerhead uh, type of uh, a sea turtle, that, uh, they're the, the biggest uh, place for them to nest is right there in Florida. So kind of interesting close to home uh, information there in terms of sea turtles uh, for us. Um, all right, let me see here. If I can get this to advance correctly. <clears throat> all right, so pretend you're a leatherbill turtle. Remember we said leatherbill was one of the, the types of sea turtles. And you're hungry. Which of these do you eat first? You get floating through, you see, oh look, there's some seaweed. There's a jellyfish. Oh, there's a sponge. And there's an urchin. What are you going to go for first if you're a leatherbill turtle? Anybody know? See, I would have a difficult time as a sea turtle. I'm not a big fan of seafood in general. All right, Christy's guessing the urchin. None of those sound extremely uh, enticing there. Will's going with uh, seaweed. Carol's going with seaweed. Threw me off there a second when I saw the A. I thought she didn't finish her, her statement, then I realized she was using option A. So I'm a little slow tonight. <coughs> All right, so most people are going with seaweed. Christy's going with uh, urchin, and the uh, correct answer is well, you can't really see that difference there. Jellyfish, uh, leatherbacks, and hawkbill turtles both love to feed on jellyfish um, and keep their populations in check. So they're one of the main uh, predators for jellyfish. Um, that's one reason when you see a lot of the um, uh, environmental things that talk about plastics being such a danger to the sea turtles that's one reason a lot of times plastics look like jellyfish when they're floating in the ocean and so these sea turtles are are bad about going and uh, trying to eat this uh, plastic thinking it's a jellyfish they ingest the plastic and really can't do anything with it so that's one of the reasons uh, for that in case you're ever wondering but yeah the uh, leatherbill in particular really likes the uh, uh, the jellyfish but uh, the leatherback will also eat it but um, uh, the hawkbill, I mean, will also also eat it, but the hawkbill has another favorite. So now I want you to not be a leatherback so much, because yeah, you, you go for the, the jellyfish, um, but now you're a hawksbill turtle, and you're hungry. So which of these do you think you're going to eat if you're a hawksbill? We already mentioned they eat the jellyfish, but that's not their favorite from what I read. Uh, they have another favorite food uh, there under the ocean. So you're a hawksbill turtle now, and you're hungry. Which of these are you going to eat? Any ideas, my little hawkbill turtle, hawksbill turtles? Maybe you're also thinking, I'm not hungry anymore. All right, so Miss Judy's going with the urchin, Will's going with the sponge on this one, but shrugging and giving the uh, question mark. Christy's saying sponge. <clears throat> All right correct answer on this is I was waiting for you. Alright, Carol, get with urchin. So everybody's kind of locked in their answer. Correct answer is sponge. The uh, hawksbill turtles in particular, they uh, they like to stay around coral reefs. Um, and uh, the coral reefs are also home to a lot of sponges. And apparently the hawksbill turtle prefers the sponge. Uh, we'll eat them before anything else. 
and the shape of their beak uh, enables them to reach into small home holes and crevices in the coral reef and find those sponges that they're hiding in there and eat them so yeah not the, exactly the diet uh, of uh, champions there to eat jellyfish and sponge but uh, I guess you know to each their own I prefer tacos and uh, steaks but uh, that's why I'm not a sea turtle all right quick question why are green turtles green so why are there's a species known as a green turtle anybody know why they are so green Or want to take a guess? <coughs> Sorry, I had to mute my speaker there for a moment. <clears throat> Hopefully that worked. Maybe hit me a quick mute button until I get over this uh, allergy stuff. <clears throat> All right. Anybody know why green turtles are green? Carol says algae. William says algae on their back. Anybody else? All right. Just give it a moment longer. Miss Jesus, Lord, because the Lord made them that way. That's a good answer. That's true. That's exactly why they're green. That's why the sky is blue and, uh, <laughs> and all that. That's a good answer. And uh, so, yeah, so you're all kind of right. Um, uh, See, so kind of. The, uh, sea tur the green sea turtle is kind of unique among all the sea turtles in that it's primarily a herbivore. And uh, because of that, it eats mostly seagrasses and algae. And uh, eating so much green stuff uh, tends to give their cartilage and their, their fat cells a greenish color. But it doesn't turn their, their shells green, interestingly enough. Um, but it does give all their, their uh, soft tissue greenish tint to it. And that's why they're called green turtles, because they have that greenish color to them. Um, and uh, so they, you know, like I said, mostly seagrass. But also by eating the seagrass, they help uh, kind of keep it from getting too tall and harming other creatures. So they're kind of like the lawnmowers of the uh, underwater uh, world there. So they kind of keep the grass cut. And a uh, good thing we have them there. So yeah, so keep us going along the lines of those uh, food questions I had there. Uh, sea turtles are green because they eat so much green. Uh, just like when uh, Hunter was little, oh, I'm trying to think what it was because he fed him so much of, but it was, uh, he was kind of yellow for a while. I don't know if it was squash or um, something, but uh, same thing's true of the sea turtles. They eat so much green food, they become green. So, <clears throat> all right, next topic of discussion here. Um, another thing I thought was interesting <coughs> Excuse me, I didn't try to turn this into a question, um, but I thought you might find it interesting is that sand temperature is important to sea turtles. Now, I mentioned that they you know, don't go up on the sand very often. Uh, primarily, the only time they go um, routinely, I guess, would be when the, the females are going to lay eggs. Um, but the, uh, the, uh, the, the sex of the sea turtle is determined by the temperature in the nest. So if this uh, turtle goes and digs a nest, lays a bunch of eggs in there, um, and the, the, the nest stays a cooler temperature, then it's going to produce male hatchlings. And if it's uh, warmer temperatures, then it's going to produce female hatchlings. So uh, you have a, a, a nest or a place where the temperatures fluctuate a lot between two extremes. Uh, maybe if you have a beach or an area where it gets really hot during the day and then gets really cool at night, uh, that will produce a mixture of males and females. So I thought that was kind of interesting, that the temperature... Uh, that the nest stays in during the time that those eggs are um, uh, uh, incubating is uh, uh, helps determine um, whether it's a male or a female turtle. Uh, it's also another one of the reasons why um, environmentalists are so concerned about uh, you know it does is the temperature of the earth going up or not uh, because obviously if the temperature of the earth did go up um, that would have an impact on sea turtles because you would eventually end up with all female sea turtles and no male turtles to 
uh, to to mate with them, and they would then go extinct uh, extinct eventually. So uh, <clears throat> I thought that was kind of neat that <coughs> excuse me <coughs> that uh, the, the the sex of that uh, sea turtle and that egg is determined by uh, the temperature of the nest. Just another to me one of those uh, amazing things about how God just uh, creates things so unique, so special. Uh, I don't know if there's any other animal that does that or not. I'm certainly not uh, well versed on animals that uh, grow from eggs, um, <clears throat> but uh, you know that, that's, it's definitely certainly rare um, to see that, and that's uh, that's just kind of a fascinating fact to me. So the sand temperature is important, and interestingly enough, I mean they, they typically like warmer climates, so <clears throat> it's a uh, uh, kind of interesting. I guess the even some of those warmer climates maybe have some cooler days. Uh, maybe also depends on how deep they dig into the sand to get it more of a cooler temperature further down. Um, but yeah, so the, uh, um, the the temperature there, vitally important. Thought you might enjoy that bit of information. Um, <clears throat> question for you. How long can a sea turtle hold its breath? Uh, a, 15 minutes. B, 5 hours. C, 3 days. Or D, indefinitely. I'm going to hold my breath till I get everybody's answer here. <coughs> okay, I can't go very long, so... <coughs> Excuse me. I guess I won't be holding my breath till I get everybody's answer there. Uh, I'm probably below average on how long I can hold my breath, so even for humans... Much less for a turtle. <clears throat> what do you think? How long can a sea turtle hold its breath? Uh, 15 minutes, 5 hours, 3 days, or indefinitely? <clears throat> so Carol's going to go with 3 days. Will's going with 5 hours. Christine and Miss Judy must be Googling. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> Chrissy's going with three days. Okay, we got some people choosing all the... Oh, wait, no, that's two, two, two people choosing three days and one choosing five hours. <coughs> I'll try again. I do that just to bother Christy. Christy can't stand to see something hold its breath. Um, we used to play that Sonic the Hedgehog video game. And when he'd go underwater, he would have like these air bubbles coming up, and you had like only a certain amount of time he could stay underwater before he had to go up. And it used to just drive Christy crazy as long as he was underwater. She just couldn't couldn't handle that. <clears throat> she can't watch those movies or TV shows where people are underwater holding their breath, anything like that. All right, correct answer is how long can a sea turtle hold its breath? <clears throat> five hours. <clears throat> they can hold their breath for up to five hours underwater. Um, they, uh, you know, they're they're a reptile, so that they uh, they do breathe air, uh, but they have this ability uh, to, you know, in nat in natural conditions, to be able to to do that. They um, slow their heart rate down um, to up to nine minutes between heartbeats to conserve oxygen. So, um, Carolson makes you panic too. Okay, yeah, that's exactly how Christy is. She just can't have that that old in the breath. Air. Um, so that's definitely uh, suspenseful there, but can you imagine, so next time you watch a sea turtle, feel that, like, oh my goodness, he's been holding his breath for probably, you know, uh, three hours already, <clears throat> but to do it, they slow their heart rate down to one beat every nine minutes, and that way they don't use as much oxygen, <clears throat> they, <clears throat> excuse me, they even sleep underwater, which tells me they can't sleep for more than five hours, apparently, <laughs> so... Uh, I don't like that aspect of being a sea turtle because I like to sleep more than five hours at a time, but uh, they uh, do sleep underwater, and uh, in fact, they spend most of their life at sea. I mentioned before, they don't really go to the beaches or the shores until they're nesting. Um, uh, the one, ex I guess, a couple of exceptions there, but one exception is the uh, the green turtles in the Pacific Islands. Uh, they will come ashore just to get on the, on the sand and kind of bask in the sun on the beach. So the green turtles are one of those exceptions, <clears throat> but for the majority of these sea turtles, the other six species there really don't get on the shores much unless there's some kind of unusual circumstance other than to have uh, lay eggs, hundreds of eggs. So, all right, 
a couple more fun facts here. Thought you might find these interesting. Um, uh, one, the they have a long life. Um, anybody want to guess how long typical um, sea turtle lives? <coughs> Well, I'm getting those answers from you. I will mention I have my data sources here. If you have any uh, questions about these uh, these facts, say, I don't think that's right. Don't argue with me. I'm not a marine biologist. I did go to the NOAA site, uh, the uh, <clears throat> um, what does it stand for? National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration site uh, of the U.S. Uh, Department there. I also went to a site called Defenders.org and EcoWatch.com, both of which are environmental uh, groups. And it has some just interesting information about sea turtles in particular. Um, so thought I would mention that. Uh, sea turtles, all seven species of sea turtles are listed as endangered species, um, which is kind of interesting. You don't usually see an entire um, set of a uh, particular animal, all the different species being listed. Um, <coughs> All right, so Will's saying 100 years. No one else is guessing. All right, Will, you're correct. They live about 100 years, and uh, that's a long time to, to swim in the ocean. Um, and then uh, I mentioned they're not retractable. I go, what, what do you mean by that? Uh, you know, land turtles, a lot of times, uh, they, they can pull everything into their shell and kind of hide. Sea turtles don't do that. They don't have to protect themselves from, pred from predators the same way um, uh, while they're in, in the water. Um, so they can't retract their flippers, they can't retract their head uh, into their shell. Um, and this, uh, you know, the way they're built kind of makes them really graceful and uh, agile when they're swimming underwater. But it also makes them highly vulnerable when they're up on shore nesting and, and hatching. Uh, and so that's kind of one of the dangerous spots for them <clears throat> is when they get up on shore. It's one reason they don't go on shore very often, because they uh, really can't move that fast or that well. But get them into water and they can move gracefully. Uh, quickly and uh, they use their rear uh, flippers as a rudder for steering when they're swimming. And I will say that uh, one time I was on a, a dive in the Philippines and uh, we came across a sea turtle there and one of the dive instructors went out and, and grabbed a hold of the sides of the sea turtle and the sea turtle started swimming off and was kind of pulling him along almost like he was a you know on a jet ski or something. Just amazing how fast that turtle took off. Uh, of course they, they don't recommend you do that because um, you do have the, uh, uh, the the problem of them, you know, maybe diving down, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, but uh, also, <clears throat> the uh, they're night nesters, so I mentioned they go on shore. Kind of kind of makes sense now when you hear that uh, they can't retract their stuff. They're very vulnerable when they're on land. That they generally only go on land at night uh, to try to um, uh, lay their eggs, bury their eggs, and get back into the ocean. Uh, the one exception to that is the Kemp's Ridley <clears throat> uh, species which does routinely nest during the day. They're the only sea turtles that routinely nest during the daytime. I have no idea why, uh, but the, most of the rest of them do it at night. I mentioned deep diver. That's the reason they don't recommend you hold on to a sea turtle if you are <clears throat> diving or underwater because they can turn and go down rather quickly, faster than our human bodies are able to uh, adjust. Um, you know, uh, leatherback um, uh, sea turtles in particular are very migratory. They cover a lot of ground when they're swimming. Uh, they swim more than 10,000 miles a year uh, between their nesting areas and their foraging grounds. Um, and they've uh, been recorded uh, at depths as high as deep as 4,000 feet. Uh, that's deeper than most marine mammals will go. So they, uh, they're very deep divers, very uh, adept underwater. Obviously one of the reasons they're able to avoid uh, you know, predators uh, so well. And obviously the hard shell on their back helps a lot too. Um, but uh, so yeah, they're deep divers and they're not dog lovers. So I know we have some dog lovers in our group. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Sea turtles aren't really crazy about dogs. Uh, they don't, they don't like your furry friends. Um, even though they're marine animals, one of their natural and predator is a dog. You may think, well, how in the world is that? <laughs> you know, <laughs> You generally don't see those dogs swimming under sea to try to get a sea turtle. Um, but because they lay their eggs on shore, um, dogs are commonly you know, finding those, uh, those, uh, those nests, digging them up, eating the eggs that are buried in the sand. Very tasty snack for dogs and a very uh, you know, uh, unfortunate end for those sea turtles that never got to hatch. So 
dogs are actually one of the natural predators of sea turtles. I would have never guessed that. that's why I included it here because I thought it was kind of an interesting little twist there. So keep, uh, keep Rover in the house just to save the sea turtles. No, I'm, I'm kidding, Chrissy. That, don't put Rover in the house. Keep Rover in the yard. Um, <clears throat> another fact, loggerheads, which is one of them we mentioned, they spend the first 7 to 15 years of their life in the open ocean. So they, uh, once, they, once they hatch and, and run out to the sea, um, that's pretty much where they want to stay. Uh, they'll, uh, about 12 years is the average. It says 7 to 15, but if you kind of average them all together, about 12 years is how long they stay <clears throat> out in the open ocean before they then um, turn back and uh, migrate to, to near shore coastal areas where they can grow and mature. And uh, through satellite tracking, researchers have discovered that loggerheads in the Pacific have a highly migratory life stage. Hatchlings enter the ocean from nesting beaches in Japan and Australia, and uh, they uh, go trans-Pacific uh, route, swimming across Pacific Ocean there, uh, defeating grounds off the coast of Baja, California, Mexico, Peru, and even Chile. That's nearly 8,000 miles. Um, so that's, uh, so that's a, a lot of swimming. So if you, uh, if you love to swim, then uh, see if you can compare with that. That's, a, that's an awful lot of swimming. <clears throat> so I mentioned uh, the way they... Um, you may be saying, okay, Chuck, well, how's this going to tie back into our lesson tonight? Um, I mentioned the, you know, the idea of how they um, go on shore to lay their eggs. And what happens is the mother, the mother turtle goes on shore. She digs that nest. She lays 100 to 125 eggs. She bury, covers them back up. And uh, then she travels back off to the ocean. She's got to get back off the land before something comes along that might want to try to eat her. <clears throat> and she's out of there. And uh, she's off. Those uh, eggs will then incubate there in the, uh, the ground, assuming nothing messes with them. That's why a lot of times when you see those sea turtle nesting areas on the beach with the big sign saying stay off the beach during this time, that's why. Because you go walking across some of those, you might crush a few uh, sea turtle eggs. But uh, then when those sea turtles hatch, the most amazing thing happens is they just kind of uh, take right off. They just, uh, let me get to the next slide here. Uh, those little baby turtles hatch and they go straight to the water. There's no, you know, mama, mama turtle's already gone, uh, daddy turtle's already gone. It's just they're on their own with a, you know, uh, hundreds of other little baby turtles that just hatched and they go straight to the water and uh, jump in, start swimming. And as I mentioned, they'll spend most of their time there in the water for a long period of time um, before they ever come back towards the shore and uh, stay anywhere near that. So uh, kind of a really interesting, you know, life cycle there. You don't see that much in other uh, animals. And, um, you know, just kind of the way they, the parent brings them, lay the eggs, goes on, you know, have a nice life. Uh, and, you know, the way the lesson tonight was talking, is says, you know, some people kind of approach God that way. I think God just kind of says, okay, here, here you are, here's your life, now go and, and you know, do what you want to do. And he just kind of leaves us all to ourselves. Like, he just kind of created us, gave us a world to live in, and then, um, you know, that's it. But God isn't like that. The Bible doesn't describe God as being that, uh, uh, that way with us. It describes him as being... Uh, you know, active in our lives as being, you know, in, uh, wanting to know each one of us or, or knowing each one of us uh, personally and wanting to have that relationship with each one of us personally, uh, making that offer of salvation to, to every single person. You know, God's protection doesn't end when we enter this world. He's with us from day one until the end. Um, Bible indicates that He's even blessing us even before we turn to Him and know Him. That uh, he's, you know, it says he causes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. Even those who reject him, turn away from him, he's still providing and caring for them and giving them a place here. And, and, and leaving the door open for them to come to know him and to have the forgiveness of their sins that he offers uh, until that point that our life is over. And uh, in today's scripture, uh, the disciples have kind of a moment of panic. They have one of those moments where they go, oh no, did Jesus leave us on our own? Did Jesus, is he, does he really care about what we're going through right now? And, uh, and it's an interesting verse. Let's go click over to that verse. Um, if I can get the slides to work. <clears throat> All right, let me... I messed up where I started there. All right, Mark 4, verse 35 is a common passage. But uh, if you think about it from this idea of do we really trust that God is taking care of us? Do we trust that God is watching out for us? Uh, think about the disciples here. It says, In the same day, when the even was come, he saith unto them, 
uh, his disciples, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent, sent away the multitude, <coughs> excuse me. When they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And they were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto them, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Now, I've read that passage plenty of times. I've heard it uh, preached on. I've heard it talked about. But I guess I'd never thought about it in, in that way of, of thinking about, does God care about us? And, and asking that question is, is God really interested in my life? Here are the disciples that have been walking with him, listening to him teach, watching him do miracles, seeing all the things he can do. And they get on this boat, and all of a sudden there's a huge storm, and Jesus is asleep right there with them. They can see him. He's, he's physically present with them. And they feel like he, just, he, he, doesn't, he, he's not, he doesn't care. You know, notice what they said there. Um, let me go back to that verse. They said, do not care that we perish. Care us not that we perish. Are you not worried about what's going to happen to us in the storm, in this boat, and, 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 and everything going on? You know, try as we might, we're all going to have days where we feel like we're alone. We go through rough patches. We live in a world that's broken and fallen because of sin. God didn't bring sin into the world. We did. But rather than abandon us on the beach, God stuck with us. God's here in spite of our sin. And he sent his son Jesus to die for our sins so that he could set everything right. That's how much he cares about our lives, about the life he's given us and who we are. We're never alone, even when we feel alone. God is always watching, and he'll never leave you. you know, it's just like we saw in the, the message this morning where Elisha was there. It was just him and the servant, and I was surrounded by a whole bunch of the enemy there. And Elisha says, hey, we got more people than they do. There's more on our side than there are on their side. Elisha knew we're never alone. God doesn't just leave us out there and say, okay, it's up to you now. Do what you can. Yeah, that's what the, the sea turtles do. It's how they're made. That's, that's the way they're supposed to work. But it's now how God works with us. And now think about it. That sea turtle, you know, when it's, it, that baby sea turtle hatches, that mother and father's not there protected. But you know what? God's still watching out for them. God has created them in such a way that he knows, I'm, I'm going to take care of them. I'm going to uh, you know, help them out. I'm going to make sure that they're protected as much as they need to be. Now, I thought about what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 26. He says, Behold, the fowls of the air. For they neither sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not, not, are ye, uh, are ye not much better than they? He says even the, the, the smallest animals God is watching out for. And he's taking care of. He's making sure that they have what they need. Uh, even in this world of uh, you know, predators and all that, he's watching out for all of them. He's taking care of them. And he says if, if I do that for all the, the sea creatures, for the little baby turtles that are hatching, on their own, no mom or daddy around, just the little bitty turtle walking across the sand, hoping no uh, big animals come along to try to attack it, headed straight for the water. He says, if I can watch out for that, think what I can do for you. So next time you feel alone, next time you feel like you need help, just remember, God watches out for the sea turtles, he's going to watch out for me. And that's what he wants to do this week. He wants to be there with you. He wants to take care of you. He will watch over you. Notice what he says. Why are you so fearful? How is it you have no faith? Let's be a people of faith. Say, you know what? I know God's going to take care of me. I know God's going to watch over me, and I can walk boldly throughout the rest of this week because God is to, can handle anything that comes my way. Just like I'm a baby turtle on that seashore, vulnerable, exposed, headed towards the ocean, the big giant ocean that I'll spend uh, so much time swimming around in as a bitty tiny turtle until I grow. He's watching out for me. He's going to get me where I need to be. Hope I encourage you this week as you go out. Hope you have a wonderful week. And if I can be of any help to you, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, I love you all, and I'll talk to you soon.